Hi everyone, my name is Adonis Ganyos and I am a research associate in NCSR Democritus located in Greece. In today's talk, I will introduce our current work, which is about enhancing workflow as a service and obtaining data provenance over the RIANA platform. Our focus mainly lies in increasing reproducibility of the European AI on demand platform. So let's dive into the details. In the past few years, the European Commission has put some significant effort in uh, the development of trustworthy and explainable AI tools for Europe. One direction of this effort is the development of the European AI on Demand Platform or AIOD, which aims to provide a unified environment both for researchers and AI practitioners. One of the European projects that implements this platform is AI for Europe, which prioritizes the needs of AI researchers ensuring their requirements are met in an effective way. AI research has a lot of things in common with other, let's say, more traditional computational sciences. So we as AI researchers have to be able to store and process very big and possibly very different between them data in, uh, in the most efficient way possible. Also, our problems uh, as well as our hypothesis on them must have a direct way of modeling. And after the modeling, we also need a way to test them. And because we are talking about uh, science, uh, we need to follow the principles of open science, ensuring the fairness, meaning that uh, the methods that we produce and the data needs to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So we can uh, see a pretty straightforward connection between uh, the AI and demand platform and the essence for, uh, for workflows. Starting from here, we will explain the basic components of our system. One major part of the AI on demand platform is the AI on demand catalog, which consists of many things that are useful for our experiments. Those things are data sets, ML models, or even computational resources. The interesting thing here is the fact that the platform also includes entities that allow researchers to define scientific workflows. And since we aim in also executing those workflows and experiments, we need to have a workflow execution system integrated within our platform. And here is where Rihanna comes in handy. Rihanna, which is a workflow execution system developed in CERN, is a system supporting many workflow languages, gives us and, and gives us a robust and stable system for executing our workflows in our environment. Having Rihanna in our stack allows us to run containerized data analysis pipelines on remote computational resources, such as cloud or HPC-based systems. And CWL is one of the languages that are supported in Rihanna. So building on top of those three things, meaning CWL as uh, the language for defining our workflows, Rihanna as the system for executing those workflows, and AI on demand catalog for fetching and storing back ex uh, external uh, data sets, uh, we try to combine uh, all those three things into a workflow as a service uh, functionality. And on top of that, we also want to add some uh, data provenance in terms of uh, workflow execution. So let's see what uh, data provenance is uh, all about. Uh, as you can see here from uh, this figure, we are talking mainly about three things, entities, activities, and uh, agents. Entities uh, can, uh, can be things that are either physical or digital or even uh, conceptual. Activities are things that are happening on uh, entities, probably producing new entities or changing uh, their properties. And the agents are, are responsible for starting or ending uh, an activity. And uh, now, if we want to map those things into our workflows. So the way we do this is uh, is the following. Uh, entity, we, we can think workflows as a text to be an entity, meaning that uh, the text of the workflow is uh, an entity itself. But uh, the, fi the files that are uh, produced in each uh, workflow step are also considered to be entities. On the other hand, we have uh, the execution of the whole workflow to consider an activity, but the execution of each individual step of the workflow is also considered to be an activity. 
here we can see that its activity is uh, related with uh, start and uh, end time. And the agent is uh, just someone who starts uh, an activity and can either be a user or an organization or even another software agent. Since we want to have an interaction with the AI and demand catalog, we have to add, to add here a syntactic sugar into our CWL in order to be able to reference in, in external uh, resources. So the way we do this is uh, this uh, key value pair, value from platform as a key, and we have a quoted uh, WCURL uh, URL that uh, has to point in a, a AIOD instance denoting the location of, uh, of the data set. The dereferencing, meaning the download and uh, if, in general, the, the fetching of the data are performed in a transparent way to, to the user, meaning that the user does not have to worry about uh, from where the, the data set will be retrieved or how it will be stored locally, etc. And uh, our system also provides the ability to store both uh, final and intermediate files back to our catalog. <clears throat> so let's see now our system overview. We have three major components, workflow registry to start with. It's uh, the place with where the workflows are registered, the CWL workflows. And uh, we have to specify here a name, a version. Uh, we have to give the CWL uh, file pro probably with uh, some uh, templating uh, in it, as you as you've seen before, and uh, after that we can also define an input file for the workflow in YAML format, and uh, after that we can uh, create, read, update, and uh, delete everything uh, is fully available at the time. After uh, a workflow is registered, we we can execute it now just by specifying its registry ID. We have to note here that uh, a user can execute uh, workflows that were previously registered by users belong to the same group as him. And uh, in order to achieve that, we need an authentication system in front of everything. So we use a key for that. And uh, our execution mechanism works in an asynchronous way, meaning that from the moment that the workflow uh, arrives to, to Rihanna, the platform is responsive again, meaning that uh, we don't uh, need to mind about how much time we will uh, consume in, uh, in the execution of the workflow. And uh, finally, we have the provenance system, and uh, which uh, utilizes a relational database to store the provenance record, and also gives the ability to the users to retrieve or visualize uh, provenance for uh, previously executed workflows. Now we will see uh, some typical user journeys in order to have a better understanding of our system. Uh, let's start from uh, from the left. Uh, we see that there is a developer uh, willing to containerize three three tools, and uh, with uh, these three tools, uh, she wants to also define a workflow utilizing them. Uh, so what it does is uh, dockerize those uh, three things, and after that. C types the CWL workflow that uses the corresponding uh, Docker image. So after she authenticates herself against uh, the system, she registers it. And uh, now the workflow is ready for execution because she has already provided everything that is essential, such as uh, the specification file, the name and the version. So here comes our next user who wants to execute the previously defined uh, workflow. He just uh, mentions that uh, he is uh, an authenticated user and wants to execute workflow with uh, registry ID, let's say one. And uh, after that, our API system uh, makes a connection with the AIOD platform, which performs the whole dereferencing process and also adds some uh, some mapping steps for. Uh, for, for the intermediate uh, steps of the workflow. And uh, after everything is, uh, is done, Rihanna takes place and uh, executes uh, the workflow. 
When uh, a workflow is submitted for execution to Rihanna, we monitor it the whole way until it finishes. And uh, when it finishes, either as a, as a success or as a failure, we store everything uh, back to our database. So we make uh, we make available for, for the user to, to retrieve uh, any information regarding the workflow, such as input or output files, uh, logs, status, and uh, of course, uh, track of, uh, of the data provenance. In terms of uh, provenance, a user has uh, two options in order uh, to, to see what, uh, what happened in a workflow. The first option is a JSON, a JSON object, or the second one is an image file representing the data provenance of the previously executed workflow. Uh, here we use the PyProv uh, Python library, which is a Python implementation of, uh, of Provo. And here we can see a very simple uh, pipeline or consisting of uh, three steps. We can see the, the blue rectangles denoting the, the activities while the, the yellow circles are the entities that were produced or were used. We can see that everything is associated with some properties and we can also check the relationship between uh, everything in this uh, in this figure. So uh, our ongoing and uh, future work taking place is uh, pretty much about uh, further interfacing with AI on the catalog since we want to also integrate with uh, external computational resources that are that are declared there. And uh, we also want to use a template system that is even more dynamic in terms of uh, maybe define some branching on the workflows or some uh, loop events uh, happening and uh, stuff like that. But uh, we have not uh, done any progress on, uh, on, the, on the last one, at least for now. Uh, as far as uh, the local Docker rematch registry, we think that uh, some users may not want to upload their work directly to Docker Hub because maybe it's more convenient for them to have it locally for uh, development purposes. So we are working on uh, this direction as well. And uh, what we think will be a very a nice thing to have would be a search functionality among uh, execution environments or among Docker environments, meaning that uh, someone who, for example, registers a, a Docker environment with uh, NLP tools uh, and he will also provide a description for it. And after that, someone who wants to use this plus something else will uh, search for this and uh, will build uh, on top. So the whole development process will be much uh, faster and more smooth. Also, we also want to, to add some interaction points to allow user to give feedback in terms of uh, deciding which uh, direction the workflow should go. Uh, meaning that uh, if, uh, if a system is not very sure about uh, its, uh, its decision, the user will be prompted and uh, will be asked to make the decision himself. So the human in the, in the loop uh, concept is, uh, is in our goals here. So pretty much uh, this is it from our side. Uh, here you can find uh, two repositories. The first one consists of uh, the API presented uh, before. The second one consists of uh, three examples. And uh, that's it pretty much. Thank you very much for your for your patience. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.